when you are saving a project, and again, this goes for any version of InDesign, any software you use, it does, this is not like a specific to graphic arts thing, you should always give it a name, a location, and a file format, and specifically on Macs, um, the dialog box that you see on the right hand side, it will be compressed and it will be smaller. And so if you can't visually see exactly what the file name that you're giving the file is, the exact location on your computer that you're putting it, and the exact file format that you're choosing, then you are risking not getting the result that you want. And so there on a Mac, there's a little triangle next to the file name. If it's pointing down, you can always click it and expand it and it will give you more options. And that goes beyond just saving a project. Anytime you see a down arrow, expand it and see what the other options are. When the dialog box expands, you can clearly see that whatever project I was working on, I'm saving it as duotone.indd, which is the standard file format for InDesign projects. I'm saving it on the desktop in the exercise files under chapter seven, and it's gonna go right here in this column here. If that's not where I wanted it to go, I can visually see that and I can change that. And then down here under file format, it uh, is giving me the option to save it as a InDesign CS 5.5 document. Your projects will say InDesign CC for Creative Cloud, and um, as more versions of CC come out, it'll even say InDesign CC 2016, InDesign CC 2017, etc. Um, you don't have the option to back save at this point in time, the time that I'm recording this video, um, but you should make sure that you're choosing that because that drop down will also have the option to save as a .idml file. It's an InDesign markup language file. It's a great file to have and you're required to create one for every, every properly packaged InDesign project that you work on in our class because um, although I cannot open a CS uh, not a CS, an InDesign Creative Cloud 2017 file in InDesign um, CS6 because Creative Cloud 2017 is a newer version than CS6 was. Um, I can't kind of go backwards. I can open the I, uh, IDML file in any version of InDesign CS4 or newer. Um, we'll go into more detail about that and the specifics of it, but having the .idml file as a backup is always a great option. And then the third option on that drop down will be to create a template. And so you can't really save um, InDesign files as anything other than those three options. Now, every once in a while, a version of InDesign comes out that allows you to save it as like a library file or something like that. Um, we won't be getting into that in this class. We'll simply be using the InDesign file, INDD, of whatever version you're using, CS uh, or CC 2017 right now. And then you can save a copy as a .idml file. If you want to choose any other file format, a JPEG, a PNG, a flash file, a shockwave file, HTML, XML, um, if you want to make uh, an app and different things like that, you have to choose export because in general, software programs will only allow you to file save or file save as a file format that can be opened in InDesign and the only file format you can actually open is a .indd file. You can open a .idml file but as soon as you open it it immediately converts it to a new INDD file. So the first thing that we're going to do whenever we receive an InDesign project is we are going to pre-flight it and pre-flighting is a term used in the printing industry to describe the process of confirming that the digital files required for the printing processes printing process you're using are all present, valid, correctly formatted, and of the desired type. Now we're going to expand that to mean more than just printing because historically Quark Express, which is a competitor of InDesign, and InDesign were page layout software applications where you would compile artwork from various sources like Photoshop and Illustrator um, in preparation for print. But InDesign is now, um, is now publishing. So instead of thinking it thinking of it as print publishing, we're just going to think of it as a pub, uh, page layout software for publishing. And we can create printed outputs, we can create digital outputs, uh, we can do a variety of different things, but we're still going to pre-flight. We're, um, we're still going to confirm that all of the digital files, all the things that we need to create or output the file in a particular method are present and valid and correctly formatted. And so we're going to focus mostly on print in ART 1200, but if you take ART 2120 eDesign and Publishing, that's an advanced InDesign class that focuses on the digital outputs. And so when you pre-flight for a digital output, you're going to still make sure that all of the files required are present, valid, and correctly formatted, 
they're just going to be correctly formatted differently because you're going to format your files one way for a web or a digital output than you would a printed output. And so preflighting can be done by a graphic designer or a printer. A graphic designer should preflight his or her work, that's you, that's what this class is designed for, um, before you send it to a printer or before you send it to someone to output your file. Um, and then the very first thing that happens when you send your file to someone, if you send it to a printer or someone who's going to create your electronic document, um, the first thing they're going to do is they're just going to repeat your same process. They're going to preflight on their end just to double, triple check to make sure that everything is present and valid. One of the easiest things you can do as a graphic designer is to properly preflight your work. Because if you send your project somewhere and the files are not right or they have to be fixed, you have two options. You can allow the printing company to fix your files for you, which they'll charge you for, or you can have them send your files back to you and then you can fix them. But either way, you're delaying the time in which it takes to, to create whatever you're trying to create. If you've got a deadline that you have to have a million postcards to New York City by Thursday the 17th, and you send your files in on the 10th, and you're told that you have to have your files in by noon on the 10th in order to meet your uh, 17th deadline in New York City, delivered to New York City, and you send your files in and they're wrong, and they have to send them back to you, and then you don't get the files back to them until the 11th, you're now not going to make your deadline because you're one day off. And so the printing company will say, well, now your new deadline for New York City is the 18th. And you'll have to either live with that or you'll have to figure out another scenario where you can get your project done on time. The pre-flight panel is the panel that we're going to start with to make sure that everything in the file is correct and ready to go. And there's two levels to pre-flighting. There's automated pre-flighting and manual pre-flighting. There is a way in InDesign to customize your pre-flight to say, I want to check for very specific things in the file. That's something we cover in the Advanced InDesign class, Art 2200 Advanced InDesign. That's another Advanced InDesign class where it focuses on printed outputs. But for now, we're going to focus on the baseline automated pre-flighting that comes standard in InDesign. And what it's going to do is it's going to check for missing or modified graphics. Those are your links or your pictures. If something is not right, it's going to throw up a red flag. Um, it's either going to be a red stop sign, which is really bad, or it's going to be a yellow triangle, which says, hey, take a second look at this because it doesn't feel right. Um, it's kind of like a caution sign. It will check for something called overset text. When we start getting into editing and InDesign, you'll find out that everything in InDesign has to go in a box. So if you want a picture, you have to make a picture box. If you want a shape, you have to make a shape box. And if you want to have text in your product, you have to have a text box. And you can only put text in the box until you can't see it anymore. And so if your box is not big enough to show all of your text, the text will flow kind of in the background behind the, the box. And so your sentence might be cut off or a paragraph might be cut out of your document that you don't see and you don't know that it's not there. InDesign will let you know that it's being cut off by indicating that there's overset text. And overset text means that there's text that you've included that you can't see in the final output. And it's either that you have more text in a text box that can't be seen, or sometimes you accidentally drag a text box off the side of your page. And InDesign will call that overset text too, and it will say there's overset text on page 7. And when you go to page 7, you can see that the text box has fallen off the side of the page. And then last but not least, you'll get an error if there are missing fonts. And so if somebody packages a project and they give it to you, but they don't include their fonts, when you open the file, you're going to get a missing fonts error. When somebody gives you a properly packaged InDesign project and they include the fonts, it also does not mean that automatically those fonts are installed on your computer, so you may also get a missing fonts error for that. If you have a missing fonts error, you have two options. You can either just replace all the text in your document with a typeface that you do have or a font that you do have, or you can install the missing font. And so even if someone gives you that properly packaged InDesign project, you're still going to get that error. But if they properly packaged it and they gave you the font, all you have to do is install the font and then all of the missing text errors will disappear. And so right now on the example here, you can see that there's a red stop sign in the bottom left hand corner. It kind of looks like a circle. I think in newer versions of InDesign, they're kind of making them more like a circle. Um, it has seven errors. Your goal is that your pre-flight panel should have a green circle, a green thumbs up as I like to say, um, indicating that there are no errors. And these are the, the automated errors. It doesn't mean that there are manual errors that we'll to also talk about. But your first level of pre-flighting is to make sure that you have a green circle 
in the bottom left hand corner of the pre-flight panel. And to do that, you're going to fix these errors and I'll show you how to do that in the next video.